here to explain how to stop the digital merry-go-round and go sell is Scott Peckstein, Vice President of Sales for Autobytel Inc. Please give him a warm welcome. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Scott Peckstein, Vice President of Sales with Autobytel. Stop the digital merry-go-round and go sell is the title of our presentation today. I wanted to spend just a minute on the actual title. We see a phenomenon taking place called the internet merry-go-round, where years ago, the consumer used to do their shopping at the dealership on the pavement. Today, they're on the internet, on this circle, cycling round and round and round, which we call the merry-go-round. So when we refer back to this analogy, think of the merry-go-round as the internet as a whole. And think of the individual rides, the horse, the unicorn. Think of those as the websites that the consumer goes to. Uh, one of those websites, hopefully, being your website. So what we're going to be talking about this afternoon is recognizing the differences, the changes in behavior. Before I can encourage or sell anybody on changing their processes in the stores, or before you go back to your stores and encourage your internet staff to change their processes, we need to understand the journey that the consumer's been on, the journey, the changes that have taken place, especially recently with consumers. So we're going to talk a little bit about buying behavior. Next, we're going to get into understanding technology that drive website traffic. Let's face it, years ago, the consumer had to come to your dealership, ultimately buy a car or a truck. Today, that consumer has to get to your website. So think of this merry-go-round analogy as literally having a horse in the race, having a horse on the merry-go-round. Just as important as getting the traffic to your website, you've got to convert the traffic. So we're going to be talking about different ways to engage with the consumer, and then ultimately we'll end the presentation with best practices as far as converting the consumer, getting them into the dealership and buying a car or truck. Call me old-fashioned. But I believe, I firmly believe that still in this day and age, the consumer has to physically come into your showroom to pull the, car, the trigger on a car or a truck. Uh, it's not so much being done from beginning to end online. So we want to start out with a, a few questions just to kind of build the frame of what we're going to be talking about this afternoon. Um, as far as make model combinations, a lot of time we in the industry don't take this into consideration as far as how confusing it is to be a consumer in today's day and age. Does anybody in the room know how many make model combinations exist today? Over 300. There's over 300 make model combinations today that the consumer needs to consider, that the consumer needs to be aware of when they start their journey. If a consumer is looking for a sedan, how many models are in the sedan segment alone? It's 31. There's 31 different sedans to choose from today. If you're looking at new model launches in 2017, over the course of 2017, ladies and gentlemen, we're looking at 73 new model launches. So again, just a reminder how confusing it is with all of these options on the menu to be a consumer today. It reminds us that our job in retail is more important than ever because it's never been so confusing to be a consumer with all these options. So the old buying funnel, remember the old buying funnel? Uh, you come into the market, a consumer comes into the market and there's awareness. They're aware of X amount of vehicles and then they narrow it down to consideration. So of the 300 plus make model combinations, I'm aware of 200 of those. However, when it comes down to considering, I'll consider maybe six of those and they whittle it down. Maybe by the time they show intent, it's one or two. They whittle it down to one and they ultimately pull, pull the trigger on a car or a truck. There's typically somebody at a workshop, there's typically somebody with a webinar that is gonna show this buying funnel and they're gonna put a big X through it and they're gonna say, the buying funnel's dead, ladies and gentlemen. I couldn't disagree with that more. Here's why. If the buying funnel were dead, people wouldn't be buying cars or trucks today. So the buying funnel isn't dead, it's just changed. We'll quote Google here throughout the next few slides and Google shows us that consumers start with social networking. They track them and they go to fact finding. Then they do a little bit more research and they pull the trigger. But we also see the opposite. Google shows us that a consumer may start with online research, take a step back, take a look at awareness and then pull the trigger. In many cases, the consumer is pulling the trigger quicker than they have in years past. So it's important not to uh, get thrown off with a consumer that just enters the market and our internet departments or our BDCs put them on a drip campaign or long-term follow-up because they tell their manager, you know what, that consumer's top of funnel. They're gonna be a while. It's important to take that into consideration. I'm gonna be quoting some stats here over the next few slides. Uh, we really just have uh, two sources that we're quoting this afternoon. Um, one is uh, IHS. 
formerly known as R.L. Polk, the heavyweight undisputed champion of data in our industry. The other is Google. And uh, I think Google says its name stands for itself. Um, so the, the, the stats, I know a lot of people have stats and presentations. The stats aren't from a survey. The stats aren't from a case study. Um, on the IHS side, it's from over 10 million leads placed uh, throughout the year. 48% of the consumers purchased something other than they originally had in mind. Shouldn't surprise us. Over 50%, let's agree that over 50% is the majority. The majority of the consumers will start their process on one brand and ultimately defect to another brand. As far as uh, uh, models, over 70% of the consumers will defect to a different model. Now, many times they'll stay within the same brand. They may submit a request or show intent on a Nissan Maxima and ultimately pull the trigger on a Nissan Ultima, but that's the behavior that we're seeing. This next stat really shouldn't surprise anybody. Think of it, any given Sunday in your dealership, 10 people come in on a Honda Accord, four out of 10 of those consumers end up burning gas in a used car. That shouldn't surprise us. We don't mind that stat. Matter of fact, most dealers are excited about that stat. But do most dealers take that into consideration on the internet leads that are coming from your website, from your OEM site, from third-party sites? It's important to keep in mind that we see IHS tracks four out of 10 consumers, over four out of 10 consumers that show intent and submit a request on a new vehicle, ultimately burn gas in a used car. So if you're a dealer, are you taking that into consideration and offering used car options to your new car customers? And then on the flip side, uh, interest rates are still low. Uh, a friend of mine bought a house not too long ago and uh, was very upset that he got a 4% interest rate on a 30-year fix. Uh, that's extremely low, taking into consideration that it was up around 16 17% just uh, back in the early 90s. Uh, so interest rates are still low. For a little bit more money, a lot of consumers find themselves flipping from used to new. So on the flip side, Keep that in mind as you get requests for used cars. One in five, almost one in five, we see coming in on used and ultimately flipping to a new. So are you offering new car offers to your used car leads? We'll spend a little bit more time on that throughout the presentation. So this next illustration is really a good representation of the 360 degree uh, buying funnel, as you, buying experience that we see today. Uh, this is a uh, illustration from uh, Google. They released a path to purchase study. And of course, in this diagram, the consumer starts on Google because it's a Google study. Uh, in not necessarily, not necessarily this order, we see the consumer hop from website to website. OEM website, your website, third party sites. They're requesting information online. Again, ladies and gentlemen, this is that digital merry-go-round that I'm talking about. Now, the most important part of this, this slide right here is Google determining that of the 24 different touch points that exist today in the car buying experience, 19 of those are digital. So again, when I started in retail, selling was easy. We did it face to face. We had that relationship. Um, we had the, uh, the needs analysis. It was all done on the pavement. Today, ladies and gentlemen, it's online. 19 of the 24 touch points are taking place in the consumer's home. This is also from the path to purchase. Uh, this is an actual, actual search string from Google. Uh, the consumer uh, types out uh, Toyota to start their search. Now I'm gonna skip right to the end. Uh, the consumer ultimately purchases a Jeep in this process. So as we go through this search string, keep that in mind. The consumer starts with Toyota. They immediately type in Jeep twice, but then they defect over to Mazda, Nissan Ultima. There's a little bit of a dreamer in all of us, this consumer uh, typed in Ferrari, not once, but twice. And this seems to be a consumer in uh, Avent Gardens, which is in Dade County, Miami. So we know it's a South Florida consumer looking for a vehicle. What vehicle that is right now, we're not sure. It could be a Toyota, it could be a Mazda, it could be a Nissan, it could be a Ferrari. And it goes on and on, Chevrolet, Ford. Now towards the bottom here, the consumer types in a Dodge dealer, Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram. And you could see literally the second half of this search string. The second half of this search string is all Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram. So the importance here it really stresses the importance. What's your why buy for me message? Going back to that analogy, once again, once that consumer gets on your ride on that merry-go-round, what are you doing to give them the information they need? What are you doing to hook that consumer so they ultimately don't go to a competitor down the street? 
Ultimately, again, this consumer purchased a Jeep, but you could see their journey. I wanted to put a face with this search string, kind of a hypothetical. Uh, here's a gal, let's call her uh, Tiffany. And uh, Tiffany does very, very well for herself. Uh, let's say Tiffany's married. She and her husband do very, very well for themselves. Let's assume they live in um, Newport Beach, California, where there's over 300 uh, sunny days a year. And uh, let's, uh, let's assume Tiffany wants a convertible, a red convertible. Let's say, let's call it a Ferrari. Again, there's a little bit of a dreamer in all of us, but the point is, just like that last slide, let me skip straight to the end real quick. Tiffany's a buyer. Tiffany's not online because she wants a car. Tiffany's online because she needs a car, but she starts out with a convertible because she lives in sunny California. Well, it doesn't take long at all before Tiffany hits herself over the head with the reality stick, and she says, well, I've got two kids that I take turns picking up from school with my husband. Probably a two-seater convertible isn't the best car for me. So like many, many people, like the stat we just saw, Tiffany's like the 40 plus percent of consumers that start their journey on the new car and ultimately burn gas on a used car. And of course, due to budget, although Tiffany has the money, she does very well for herself. There's the private schooling to take care of and, and other bills and saving for retirement. Tiffany finds herself buying a slightly used car, an X5 in this case. Now, Tiffany is notoriously known for throwing a monkey wrench in our internet and our BDC's processes, and here's why. Tiffany's a buyer. That's the most important thing to keep in mind. But will Tiffany buy that Ferrari? Will Tiffany buy that convertible? No. But Tiffany's putting her hand up as she once was a walk-in. Now she just needs a car. But when that Ferrari dealer called her, let's call it Ferrari of Newport Beach in this case, did they do the needs assessment? Hi, Tiffany. Uh, who's the car for? Most important question. Just because Tiffany's name is on that lead form doesn't necessarily mean the car's for her. Think back to the 1990s, 2000, or even today, when a consumer walks in, that's one of the very first questions. Three, four people walk in, our first question is, well, who's the car for? Too many times on the internet, whether that consumer comes from the OEM, third party, our own website, we always assume, or we typically assume, that the, the, the car is for that person. So it's important to take into consideration, had the internet manager from Ferrari of Newport Beach on this hypothetical done a good job, they would have done a needs assessment. Tiffany, who's the car for? What's important to you? How's the vehicle going to be used? And Tiffany wouldn't know that Ferrari of Newport Beach sells SUVs because that inventory is in their Maserati inventory on a different website, but they could have very easily assessed or diagnosed, I should say, a SUV for Tiffany. There's an old saying in the medical industry, prescription before diagnosis is malpractice. The Ferrari dealer in this case prescribed a Ferrari for Tiffany, which she didn't need. She should have been diagnosed an SUV and they could have very well retained the sale. So what's the bottom line? You know, all this behavior, where does it lead? This shouldn't surprise anybody. Consumers are spending more time online. I've been speaking at, at, at events, at workshops for many, many years. Every single year, this is uh, a stat that continues to climb. We don't yet have 2016 stats, but Google tells us that a consumer spends on average 16.8 hours in 2015. Now that number is up from 13.8 hours in 2013. That number is up from 15.5 hours in 2014. And we can only imagine that number is going to continue to climb as there's more and more information on the internet. And of course, no dealers are really excited about this next stat, but we've got to talk about it. More time online means less time in the dealerships. Everybody usually has a stat. I've heard 1.2, I've heard 1.6. I even heard uh, at a prior convention, uh, consumers now spending on track uh, on average 0.9 hours. They're, or they're usually uh, going to 0.9 dealerships. I don't agree with that stat. I still think you have to go to a dealership to buy a car or a truck, but let's agree it's under two and it's more than one. Consumers are visiting less than two dealerships on average. So, so it's just a reminder, the point that I'm gonna try to make throughout this entire presentation, your at-bats, ladies and gentlemen, are on the internet today, not so much at the dealership like they once were not too long ago. In 2005, uh, we saw the, the consumer visit on average five dealerships. That wasn't that long ago. And then again, Google reminds us that 77% 70, of the consumers are not fully decided at the start of their journey. Ironically, is probably the best word I could think of for this next slide. Ironically, compared to everything we've talked about so far this afternoon, the consumer is quicker to purchase. Now, as I just mentioned, we've been speaking a lot. We've been given a lot of workshops over the years. I've never said this. We've never seen this data. Typically, the consumer 
goes longer and longer and longer. When the internet came out uh, in the 90s, uh, two types of people owned a computer, doctors and lawyers. And we saw them pulling the trigger. We had data back in the 90s that showed that the shelf life of consumer was days. Uh, then we saw it go to weeks. And what we've been preaching to dealers throughout the years is, hey, follow up, follow up, follow up. That journey's longer and longer and longer. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here to tell you today that 89% Google track this, and we have data too, that's very, very close. 89%, almost nine out of 10 consumers will ultimately pull the trigger within three months, within three months of submitting that first lead. Now that number is up from 83% just in 2014. Now where it gets interesting, if you break that down to a 30 day, 69% of the consumers are pulling the trigger within 30 days. So remember back to those first few slides, there really is no such thing as a top funnel consumer. If you start labeling uh, or mentally labeling a consumer as top of funnel, you very well may miss that consumer because seven out of 10 consumers are pulling the trigger. Almost seven out of 10 consumers are pulling the trigger within those first 30 days. That number is also up almost 10, 11% just from uh, 2014. So again, keep that in mind when you're looking at your gestation period as far as when you're selling cars. Keep that in mind when a top funnel or what may seem to be a top funnel, a new consumer coming into the market, they're pulling the trigger pretty quickly. I want to spend just a minute again on the merry-go-round effect. Uh, again, it's when a consumer comes to the merry-go-round, the 24 different touch points of which 19 are digital, and Google watches these consumers hop from one, two, three, four, up to 19 on average different websites. I can relate to that. I've got a son, his name is Nicholas. We call him Nico. And once in a while, probably twice a month, I meet uh, he and his mother, my wife, at the mall. Uh, there's a mall called uh, South Coast Plaza uh, where, uh, where I work, about five minutes from where I work. And I don't ever have to text them as far as where they're gonna be. I always know that they're at the carousel. My, my boy loves the carousel. And I wanna get on with my lunch. I can't sit there all day. He loves riding all the different animals, just like the consumer in this journey. And uh, I'm not claiming to be the father of the year. I've met better fathers, I've seen worse. Um, but we bribe Nico. We bribe Nico to get off the, uh, off the carousel so we can get going with our lunch. Whether that be with a nutritious hot dog for lunch or a toy, uh, we bribe Nico and it typically always works. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not telling you to bribe the consumer to get him off the website, but you need a compelling reason. Otherwise, just like Nico, you're gonna see him hop from one to another. So I wanted to spend some time over the next few slides really getting into the goals of this presentation, the goals of today. One, you've got to get the consumer to your website. You've got to get the consumer to your website. You need to have a horse in the race. Two, just as important, you've got to get the consumer off of your website. Because there's always somebody that's going to say, oh, you know, we don't need car salesmen in the future. Everything's going to be done online. And although some of that is true as far as the consumer starting their journey online, a lot of dealers have been able to move the four square in the beginning of the process online. I am not a believer that cars are going to start selling themselves online. There are some specialty cars out there, but for the most part, this is a relationship business. And I would agree with the opposite that it's never been more important to have new and used car uh, consultants consulting with these consumers because there's so many options and we see and Google sees that these consumers are more confused than ever. So getting the traffic to your website. There's been a lot of ways over the years. Uh, a lot of this isn't new. SEO, SEM, traditional media. You know, sometimes dealers say, especially on the East Coast and the West Coast, ah, traditional media, we're all digital. Be careful there. Uh, we highly suggest traditional media. Make sure it's trackable. You want to make sure um, your, your money's uh, trackable. You can, it's as easy as tracking it with an 800 number like we did in the olden days. Um, banner advertising, deal reviews are extremely important. Uh, videos are extremely important from an SEO standpoint. So make sure you've got videos uh, to get those eyeballs to your website. Some relatively new technology, social media. Make sure you're taking place in social media, especially as these millennials are taking over and uh, are making up the majority. Uh, they are highly influenced on social media. I want to spend just a minute on vertical advertising, somewhat of a new concept uh, to some dealers throughout the U.S. Vertical advertising is advertising to a consumer that has shown intent on a make model where you have their zip code. So this is where I lose a lot of people. Scott, what does that mean? Let me give you an example. There's a lot of traffic coming to these third-party sites. And a lot of these consumers do not convert on these third-party sites. So they quietly leave. There's technology now that basically presents an offering to these consumers. 
says, Mr. Consumer, I know you're in 11550, a zip code in New York. We know you're looking at a Nissan Pathfinder. Uh, I know you didn't submit your information here, but before you leave, can we send you to either Nissan.com? Can we send you to a local Nissan dealership in Garden City? Can we send you to somewhere else? So again, think of it as SCM, but instead of uh, bidding on a word Ford, where you may be picking up uh, bidders that are looking to do a, a report for high school on Henry Ford, think of it as a consumer that has already showed intent on a Nissan in a zip code down to the specific model that you're bringing to your website. There are some best practices touted in our industry that you should be sending these consumers to a VDP. Be careful there. We actually don't agree with that. Uh, to use an analogy, that's like going to a restaurant and sitting down and opening up the menu and having one thing on the menu. If a consumer's looking at a Nissan Pathfinder and you're buying that click to your website, don't just take them to a, a, a Nissan Pathfinder VDP because the odds are if they don't like that color or the, they're looking for leather and it has cloth, they're bouncing and you're gonna see a very, very high bounce rate. Um, as an option, send them to either a tactical landing page on why the Nissan Pathfinder is a, a great buy, or even better, show them the SRPs. If you have 25 Nissan Pathfinders in inventory, show the consumer all of those 25. And if they're looking for that one specific one, it's gonna be in your SRPs. So how do you stop the merry-go-round? So on this hypothetical, now you've got them on your website, what do you do to convert them? Well, first, before we convert, we've got to engage. So best practices, we've got traditional chat. A lot of dealers don't think it's the most popular thing, but it's effective and it works. It's a great way to engage. Quick response, obviously, as these consumers hop from ride to ride, we want to respond to them very, very quickly if they have a question. Um, I, I mentioned videos again, not only from an SEO standpoint, but people love videos. I like videos. Uh, it's a great way to engage the consumers. Uh, Trade-in tools, don't forget about that second half of the deal. Soft pull payments. Most dealers have credit apps today. Uh, typically, the type of person to fill out a credit app is, is a person with nothing to lose. We don't see a very high conversion on our credit apps. Quite frankly, we scare a lot of people away. We scare most people away when we ask for their social security and their date of birth. Ladies and gentlemen, there's now technology that allows the consumer to put in their name, their address, and the majority of the consumers were able to match and conduct a soft pull. So a soft pull is not, nothing different than what American Express Visa uh, are doing to us right now. We're gonna come home, we're gonna see a stack of mail at home, and there's gonna be offerings. Hey, you've been pre-approved for a credit line up to $30,000. The bank conducted a soft pull on me. There's no inquiry, my credit's not affected, but there is a way to do that today on your dealership website. And it's great because after you know what this consumer's credit is, you can present offerings such as uh, financing and you can determine the, the pack on the back. So it really, again, comes to the point where consumers wanna start their journey online, and it's literally a great way to uh, begin to move that four square online versus getting them into the dealership and or showing them dum dummy payments. Some newer technologies uh, that we wanted to present this afternoon, there's uh, virtual showroom technologies out there. Uh, think about the meet and greet. Uh, when we used to be face to face with all our consumers and now they're hiding behind their keyboards uh, for all the parents in the room and all the grandparents in the room or really you don't have to be a parent or a grandparent to know what FaceTime is, right? You've got your cell phone and you FaceTime uh, from one person to another and you can hear each other and see each other. Uh, they now have technology on dealership websites and we see that as the future. Uh, you don't see too much of it today, but ask me four or five years from now, uh, it's probably going to be a, a process that takes place on a lot of dealers' websites. It's not only in the automotive vertical. So again, to recap, there's technologies out there today that allow us to turn on our cameras and show our faces to the computer, uh, to the consumer on the computer. And then they have the uh, uh, option to turn on their camera, and now we're face-to-face. -face. As we once were in the dealership, they're in the comfort of their own home. And again, it's a relationship business. We're establishing that relationship. And then inbound and outbound uh, texting. We did a 90-minute presentation on this category alone. Usually with questions, we get hung up on this category. I'm going to keep it very, very brief. Uh, texting is the primary means of communication on mobile devices. As the world continues to go mobile and more people go to your mobile website, the primary means of communication on that device is not calling. It's definitely not email, it's texting. Make sure you have a texting option on your website. Make sure you're giving the consumer the opportunity to text you. And what I'll leave you off with here is please, please, please make sure you're compliant. 
And to get started on that journey, you should Google TCPA, Telephone Consumer Protection Act. And they'll tell you the do's and the don'ts about texting, but you could get in a lot of trouble if you're not compliant. So please check with your legal staff. Please check with your lawyers. And uh, if you're going to do it, which you should, make sure you're compliant. So at this point, we talked about getting the consumer to our website. At this point, we talked about converting the consumer. But let's face it, a lot of these consumers aren't going to convert and just run right into the dealership. We fall into the, the follow-up bus, which is the majority of the calls that we're making every single day in our BDCs, in our inner departments. We're following up. We're following up with leads. We're following up with people who showed interest, who showed intent. This is one of my favorite graphs. Uh, just to take a step back, um, our company teamed up with IHS, formerly known as RL Polk, years ago. And what they do is all of the leads, a little over 10 million a year, they track every single one. And they tell us how many bought, from whom they bought, what they bought, even who the customer financed through. And it's great for us because we can see what's happening to our leads. Uh, it's great for dealers because they can see what's happening to the leads. Send a, a, a dealer 100 leads and 10 bought, they know all about those 10, but what happened to the other 90? And what IHS showed us, just like the Google stat, the majority of the people were buying within the first 30 days. Shouldn't surprise any of us, right? Our stats, our IHS stats are almost identical to that of Google. Just to explain this graph a little, uh, a little bit more in depth, this is a new car consumer. This is a new car consumer who submitted their information and bought. The blue graph indicates those who stayed and bought new. The green graph indicates those who submitted the new car request and ultimately defected to a used vehicle. So again, no surprise, the majority of the consumers pull the trigger, the mode, if you will, the most people will pull the trigger within those first 30 days. Even though a good amount will buy used, the majority of those consumers will buy new. Ladies and gentlemen, look what happens after day 30. Look what happens after day 60. The propensity for a consumer to submit a new car request and ultimately defect to a used car skyrockets. It's an interesting graph because it actually proves, and this, is, this has been like this for a while, that there are more consumers submitting new car leads and buying used after day 60 than there are consumers who submit new car leads and buy new. But think about this for a second. Our BDCs are in our department. Mr. Jones submits a request on a 2017 Corvette. Hey, Mr. Jones, Scott Peckstein here from Peckstein Chevrolet. You know we've got the biggest Corvette inventory west of the Mississippi. I've got three canary yellow Corvettes that you requested. When can you come down and take a look at these vehicles? Ah, uh, yeah, Scott, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit top funnel. I, I just got into the market here. Uh, give me a few weeks. And our old process is this trick bag that we fall into. Mr. Jones, Scott Peckstein here, day 30. Day 45, day 60, still have the biggest inventory Corvette. Mr. Jones is going to stop taking my phone calls. There's nothing new to offer. Mr. Jones knows everything I have to say. I said it all on that first email and on that first phone call. Here's a nugget. Change up the conversation. When Mr. Jones submits that request, get back to him with a new vehicle, of course. But ask Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones, I've been able to save a lot of my customers a substantial amount of money by looking at something slightly used. Mr. Jones, is that something that might interest you? And you're putting that fork in the road right out of the gate. Because we know a lot of the consumers, ultimately a little more than four out of 10, are going to buy used, wind up bringing up in that first conversation. Now, if Mr. Jones says, well, you know what, Scott, I got to tell you, in 1988, I bought a used car and it was a lemon. And that used car is somebody else's problem. That's not for me. Okay, you're a type B consumer. I'm going to mark you that in my, in my uh, CRM. I'm not going to bring up used again. I'm not going to offend you or insult you. A lot of the consumer is going to be open to that used car. And especially around day 30, day 45, we're encouraging you, ladies and gentlemen, to change up that conversation because we know after day 45, day 60, the majority of the Mr. Joneses are going to buy used anyway. So why not talk about it? So here's your day 30, your day 45 phone call. Mr. Jones, Scott Peckstein, Peckstein Chevrolet. As you know, we've been talking about the Canary Yellow Corvette, but that's not why I'm calling you. Mr. Jones, I'm calling you to tell you that we had a big Labor Day sale and we sold a lot of cars. And what that means to you is that we took in a lot of trades. I got five Camaros, four Mustangs, and three Corvettes that we traded in, half of which haven't even made it through detail yet, but I thought of you when I saw these cars. Is this something that may interest you? And there's value here. Mr. Jones, whether I'm a voicemail at this point and I'm on his answer machine or we're live, he's scratching his head and saying, well, I didn't want to tell you, Scott, but I can't afford that new car. Or the wife hit me over the head with the, uh, the, uh, the obvious stick and reminded me we're not buying a brand new Corvette, but I am interested in that Camaro. So again, it's a great way to, to engage. 
The other nugget here I wanted to talk about, again, looking at these stats, looking at this timeline, reminding you that 43% of the new car consumers defect to a used car, reminding you that 17% of the consumers that submit a used car request ultimately burn gas in a new car. What's your gestation period? I'll repeat that. What is your gestation period in your dealership? It has nothing to do with being pregnant, at least for this example. A gestation period is defined as how long does it take on average from when a lead comes in for you to sell them a car or a truck. Now I'm in dealerships all year long and all too often we see a gestation period around eight, 10, 12 days, which is scary because here we and Google and IHS are showing you a buy cycle that lasts up to 90, 100, 110 days. Don't forget about the 90 day plus customer. 11% of the consumers are still pulling the trigger after 90 days. So even though the mode here, the most, the mode, the majority of the people are buying in those first 30 days, the mean, the average is stretched out for five, six weeks because customers are pulling the trigger at day 70, day 80, day 90. So we would encourage everybody to take a look, if you don't know what your gestation period is, to go into your CRM and figure out what your gestation period is. You can do that by going back to last month, go ahead and pull all of your December sales and ask your BDC manager or run the report yourself out of your CRM to see when those leads came in. If all of your December sales are leads that had come in in December and in November, you have a very short gestation period. A healthy gestation period, again, would be four to five to six weeks. Uh, it's football season. Let's go with a football analogy. It's like literally showing up to the Super Bowl, playing your heart out for that first half, going into the locker room, and never coming back to play the second half. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot of points to be scored in the second half of this game at around day 30, day 45, day 60 with these consumers as they age. A slice of the reality pie we see, IHS sees about a third of the consumers buying that at least come across a, a lot of sites out there. Uh, a third you'll never sell, ladies and gentlemen. A third are one cans. They want to buy a vehicle, but under no circumstances can they. Uh, this is a real frustrating third. A third are Ken won'ts. A third can buy a vehicle all day long, but there's not a snowball's chance in Phoenix that they're going to buy a vehicle from us, let alone anyone. But a third will buy, and that's important to keep in mind. Knowing that a third of the, are going to buy their Ken Wills. And even though it's a losing proposition, we come to work every single day to talk to two-thirds of the customers that are never going to buy a car, but a third will. And think about that. One out of three phone calls, we've got, on average, a buyer on the phone. How do we get them to buy from us? I want to challenge everybody's processes. Um, there's boxes around four of these five processes. I, don't, I didn't think that the middle one deserved a, bo uh, a box around it. It should be a given at this point. I didn't want to emphasize it too much. If a, if a request comes in for a vehicle, get back to the consumer on that vehicle. If it's a Camry, get back to them on that Camry. You've got to win their trust. Um, but present offers. Let's start uh, with brand. Why buy brand? If you're a BMW dealer and you get a request for a 3 Series, how are you selling that brand? Because odds are, if that consumer's looking at a 3 Series, they're also looking at a Mercedes C-Class. They're probably looking at a Lexus IS. And even if your BMW 3 Series is $40, $50 more a month, you don't have to lose to price. Because think about that. What does BMW offer that Mercedes and Lexus doesn't? It used to be a four-year uh, 50,000. Uh, as of 2017, it's a three-year 36,000-mile maintenance program. That includes everything from brake pads to oil changes to windshield wipers. Now, that could very easily make up that $40, $50 price gap a month. Is that something you're telling every single one of your BMW consumers as they come across via the phone and email? Because in many, many cases, it could make up that price difference and help you retain a BMW consumer from going to Mercedes or Lexus. Why buy for me? It's also important to have on every email, on every phone call. What makes you special? There's a dealership, uh, a Mercedes dealership in uh, Orange County. They do a really good job of pulling Mercedes consumers from Los Angeles up from San Diego. How do they do it? They have the same car. In many cases, it's the same price, if not more, but they're getting consumers because they offer free rides to the airport. For somebody like me that travels two weeks out of the month, my local airport, uh, John Wayne Airport, charges $20 a day for parking. $20 a day for parking, five days a week, 10 days a month, that's $200 a month I'm going to spend on parking. And if I live in Los Angeles or San Diego, and even if they can beat this Mercedes dealership price by $50, $60 a month, but this dealership's going to offer me savings of $200 a month in parking, probably going to buy my car from them. So what's your why buy for me message? 
what makes you different? What uh, differentiates you from your competitors. Alternative vehicles, we've touched on this throughout the presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, if a request comes in on a Maxima, give them all the information on that Maxima and give them another option. We see it all the time. Anybody that's shopped on Amazon, on eBay, you're looking at watches. Well, Scott, folks who have looked at this watch have also considered and bought these watches, but we don't do that in the industry. End the email with, here's all the inform information, Mr. Jones, on that Maxima, but a lot of consumers who have looked at Maxima have also considered the Ultima. So give them that option. You're already communicating. Uh, if it's a Honda uh, Accord, many consumers have uh, saved a substantial amount of money by also looking at the Honda Civic. And then all used options. There's always trainers in the industry. Mr. Dealer, Mrs. Dealer, whenever you're looking, uh, talking to a consumer about a new car, always give a used car option. That's great, but if you have 120 used cars in inventory, why are you giving them just one option? Again, it's like going to that restaurant and seeing one thing on the dessert menu in this example. If they're gonna go to used, which over four out of 10 will, send them your entire inventory. It's just a link on an email. So tips of the trade to wrap up, ladies and gentlemen, get your consumers to your site. Uh, you've gotta have a horse in the race. Make sure you're one of those 19 digital touch points. When they're on your site, have a way to one, engage with these consumers, have a way to two, convert these consumers, ultimately get them into the dealership. Once you start the follow-up game, think of it like a game like ping pong. You'll always wanna end with a question. If the consumer has a question, don't just answer the question, ask them a question right back. Keep that ping pong match going, keep them engaged. Don't forget what we first learned in this industry. The very first day I was greener than, greener than the greenest green pea, I can assure you. But the very first thing I learned before I got to step foot on that lot was who, how, and what. Who is the vehicle for? How is it gonna be used? Mr. and Mrs. Consumer, what's important to you? Are we doing that needs assessment with the meet and greet online today? Because it's that same consumer that was on our lot 10, 15 years ago. They're, stri they're simply online. Do we have those same fundamentals when we're engaging with them? Put a fork in the road on that first 30-day call, on the very first call and follow up with day 30 on that used vehicle. Always have a reason to, t to call back. Again, we use the example of uh, having a big sale over the weekend and taking in a lot of trades. Whatever the reason is, try to take the word follow-up out of your talk tracks and your BDC and your internet departments. Also try to take the word, uh, even if you have a little curse jar, where every time somebody in your BDC says the word lead or follow-up, have them put a dollar. Uh, or something nominal in that, in, in that jar. Uh, consumers don't like to be referred to as leads and uh, there's not much value when you start the conversation off, Mr. Jones, I'm just following up. Because psychologically, Mr. Jones is thinking, well, what is this person gonna offer me today that they hadn't already covered last time we spoke? And lastly, know how to overcome the objection I was just looking. On that first day of training, when I started selling Fords uh, back in the 1990s, I was taught with lots and lots of practice that afternoon um, how to overcome the statement I was just looking. Mr. And Mrs. Jones, welcome to Total Click Ford. My name is Scott and yours is. Scott, we're just looking. Great, are you looking for a new car or a used car? Well, we're just looking, but we're looking for a new car. Well, these are the used cars. Follow me, here are the new cars. And we get to the new cars, well, are you looking for a car or a truck. Well, we're just looking, but we're looking for a truck. Okay, well, here are the SUVs. How are consumers saying that today online? Because they're not saying I was, I'm just looking. It's that same consumer giving us the exact same excuse. They're just using a different word track and we need to be aware of it. I was just playing around on the internet. We hear it all the time. And a lot of time that's the end of the phone call. And the reality is that's, I'm just looking. I'm just playing around on the internet. Well, Mr. Consumer, I can completely relate. Before I bought my house, I played around the internet for six months. Before I bought my uh, boat, I played on the in internet probably three hours a night for about two months. I can completely appreciate the fact that you're playing around the internet because I know that's how you're getting your information today. How can I help you out? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Scott Peckstein. I appreciate your sharing your time with us. Thank you.